welcome to the third installment of the Verity Prosperity Clarity Project as we discuss the 12 powers inherent within each person. These 12 powers are your inheritance because remember, the kingdom of God is at hand now. My name is Chelsea, your Affluence Ambassador, and I thank you for joining me on this video on the next power we will discuss, faith. We've covered elimination because you have to eliminate to elevate, love because that's the driving force of nature, and now faith. And let me just say, I applaud you for the time you're investing in yourself because this knowledge will unlock some things within you. So let's allow our awareness to expand, shall we? Did you know there's no such thing as a lack of faith? So many preachers and teachers have unassumingly led our consciousness astray from who we really are. And if you missed the introduction video, go check it out. This was why I was created, to help people into the consciousness of their higher self, to live from the mentality of divine mind, Christ consciousness, if you will. My community, specifically of black and brown people, we need to move from a sin consciousness to a grace consciousness. And that's exactly what this channel aims to do. Check this out. This here is a map of consciousness provided by the Institute of Spiritual Research, which I got from one of my metaphysics classes. The very intention of my channel is to raise the consciousness of humanity so that we can regain our actual conscience. But look, see how when you're in the victor consciousness up top or the grace consciousness, you're in the cool colors, but victim consciousness at the bottom or sin consciousness is the warmer colors? You think it's a coincidence that people who experience those lower vibratory emotions have more inflammation in the body? Nah, it's not. So, continuing the thought of how there's no such thing as a lack of faith. We always have faith in something. And if you think about it, your faith is revealed in your body language, your tone of voice, and your word choice. Faith can be characterized as expectancy or a belief in a certain outcome. A conviction we have plenty of faith it's just we tend to place our faith in results we wish not to have we think more on what we don't want rather than what we do want and with the seat of our power of faith emanating from the center of our brains within the pineal gland as seen in this photo here we have to be responsible with this powerful gift to live a happier experience in this life, we have to increase our awareness of the opportunities that surround us, which call us to that higher and happier place. If you want to travel, watch the Travel Channel so your imagination can grow into the places you've yet to explore. Then spend about five minutes or so a day visualizing yourself there and feeling how you would as if you were already there. If you want a greater income, increase your self-awareness through books from the likes of Wayne Dyer and Eckhart Tolle, other various YouTubers like myself, and TED Talks just to get you started. Picture yourself growing into a larger person and feel the power you'd have as if it's already achieved, affecting millions upon millions of people. Doing this regularly puts your faith in motion towards who you are becoming and it enlarges your territory in the realm of spirit so it creates manifestation quicker. What's paramount to know here is that ancient texts tell us faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's break it down. The substance is God, the super consciousness of pure light that exists in the center of every atom as well as the furthest galaxy and that light makes up all things you have to realize you're always in the presence of limitless substance which you shape through your thoughts and feelings and actions you are not the wave in the ocean you are the ocean in a wave that's paradigm shifting now the substance of things hoped for is whatever vision you're expecting to manifest who do you want to be when you grow up? Each person is either living in a dark, dog-eat-dog -dog world or a world full of love and joy. You can say all day, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make it, but 
If you keep imagining failure and picturing the worst case scenario come true, it doesn't make a bit of difference of what you're saying at the moment. The frequency you're emitting through your thoughts and emotions in this case are stronger than the frequency emitted from your throat chakra, your power center. Now, this has nothing to do with being realistic or practical. All things are possible with God. All things leaves nothing out. Just give yourself to every reason why you deserve the good you're hoping for. You're a child of the Most High, an heir to the throne of heaven now because the kingdom of God is at hand now. The Most High has already given you a hope and a future of prosperity, but if you don't imagine some of those possibilities for yourself, you disengage from God's creative power of the imagination. That's the power of goals. That's the power of intention. God wants you to wear the coat of many colors. God gains great joy in your prosperity. Just yield your will into the divine flow of the bliss you would prefer to have in life. Where attention goes, energy flows, then results show. Create in your imagination the feeling you'd experience as the events you want play through your mind. This is the evidence of things unseen. Remember this photo? When people say it came to them from out the blue, the ganglionic center of the pineal gland is the blue they're talking about. That or the sky, both interpretations are true because they're metaphysically synonymous with each other. We are gods. So create in your mind's eye, in your imagination, what you would love to see happen in this realm of time. Your imagination is the architect of your life, but somehow we grew out of living in our imagination by people who have told us to grow up. Ever heard the saying, without the vision, the people perish? Well, it's because they haven't given substance, God, anything specific or significant to construct or to mold. And where do you think the vision originates? We are co-creators of God. We are co-creators with infinite intelligence. So unless we give God something to work with, he'll be supporting you at your current level of consciousness until you specify higher requests. Imagination is another power included within your inheritance that we'll discuss later, but it plays a major role in exercising faith, so it had to be mentioned here. Also, it's important to note that there's an intellectual faith and a spiritual faith. An intellectual faith is belief in logic and reason, like I'll get the job because I have a degree. But spiritual faith is I'll get the job because God is for me because he's more than the whole world against me. Both include an assurance in the expectation of manifesting the desire, just trusting different forces of nature that are working together. The apostle associated with faith is Peter. Peter was told in ancient texts, upon this rock, I will build my church. When he had his epiphany of who Christ was, this signified spiritual faith or knowledge from above. So what if you think you're not creative enough? Or what if you don't want to get specific in an event you'd like to manifest? Calling it keeping your options open. If your faith in the best outcome needs to be enlarged or clarified, your commitment to a greater vision and the tenacity to develop it may need to be strengthened. Remember coming to America when Hakeem traveled all the way from Africa to America to find his bride? What kind of faith did he employ? When Nicki and Drake made all those albums with the expectation of becoming huge stars, what kind of faith was that? <laughs> My man Steve. When he took the stand up at almost 40 years old, what kind of faith do you think he employed? I see you, Steve. Them suits evolved with you, bro. And the illustrious Taraji P. She took her son and moved clear across to the other side of the country to chase her dreams of stardom. What kind of faith did all these achievements take? And let me take it a step further. Your faith in a good outcome is null and void if you don't first have faith in yourself. God is within you, so you cannot fail. Anytime the Bible says believe, it means to believe in yourself. This is the foundation of all faith. So if 
you make excuses and have a plethora of reasons why things don't work out for you, there are some limiting beliefs that need to be done away with. Those strongholds need to be called out. Otherwise, they'll keep steering your life and you'll just call it fate. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Oftentimes, limiting beliefs we've had up to this point usually stem from erroneous teachings or assumptions we've accumulated over the years. And those erroneous ideas can be so hard to let go of because you're comfortable with them. Or the person who taught them to you, you love. And you want them to love you in return. So you subconsciously justify their perspective for their acceptance. On one or more levels, you're defending that person, keeping their ideology as your own, but you're also defending that limiting and disempowering belief too. Like those women who say, I don't need a man. What? Choose ye this day whom you will serve and let it be your higher self and not the brokenness of others. Now in closing, you should know that faith knows no defeat. Faith is. Faith is what makes the word become flesh. Whatever you ask for in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. According to your faith, be it done unto you. There's an intention behind the words you speak. So that is what will manifest in your world. If you have faith, you can say to this mountain, move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But if you have all this power without love, your attempts at advancement may be futile. We covered love in a previous video, but haven't given much airtime to the spoken word, which is hugely important. Whatever intention is behind the words you speak, you will see that energy return to you. So keep in mind to use words purposefully. Respect their power. Use them within a loving context. Be present because you reap what you sow. So I hope this video has supplied for you the clarity of how faith works through your thoughts, words, and actions which affect your life's outcomes. And we've only touched the surface because we didn't even explore why in many circles Abraham is known as the father of our faith and why Noah acted in faith and built his ark. We didn't even delve into how fear affects faith and how to increase our power of faith towards wonderful outcomes. But those within my Affluence Alliance of the Prosperity Clarity University will have additional examples plus steps to work through to enlarge their mental territory. And if you'd like to join, follow the link below. The description will give you everything you need to know. But now that you have the awareness of what you can think about to ensure you're focusing on your good and your highest and best outcomes, you'll begin to see more of that developing in your life. Watch, you'll move from despair to delight. Be sure to share with me in those comments how this has improved your modus operandi and be sure to share with your friends and family. And I'll see you on the next video installment entitled Understanding.